Yes, 4 a.m. Um, I guess that um, I spent uh, the um, end of the night yesterday. I I'm still naked. Um, well, I, I crashed at like, it was like 2 o'clock when I crashed or something. I um, mean, I was only awake for like 5 or 6 hours yesterday. So I guess the way it worked out was that I got my sleep. I, I went to bed a little bit early in order to catch up on the sleep that I missed the night before and get the regular sleep that I would normally got. Um, I'm currently very alert, very awake. I'm ready to get something to eat. Um, I fucked up the vlog um, edit for the 30th and the 1st, so... And those are the only long ones. The 30th is about 20 minutes, and the 1st is a little less than an hour. So, um, that took some time to fix. Um, currently the one for the 3rd is just about finished, and then like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are gonna be real quick, because they're all like 10 minutes long. Right, so, um, the focus for the day, um, it's just a question of rendering it, right, right, and I, I'm not going to have a multitasking problem, because I, I'm just not, um, so I'm going to be, while that's working, I'll be on the other machine doing some filing, um, that filing that never got done, that I was supposed to do on the, what, the, uh, 13th, uh, today's the 16th now, um, so yeah, that's, uh, See, this is a nice thing about not having to go to work, right? I can go to a concert and then sleep for the whole day, <laughs> right? Um, I don't have to worry about dragging myself anywhere. It's, it's quite great, right? So, um, yeah, I'm wide awake, I'm perfectly alert, and um, while I don't think I'm gonna get any actual listening done today, I think I should um, get plenty of, like, things done, right? So filing, editing, and, uh, I could be caught up by the end of the day. Uh, the vlogs that are here are that short. Um, I'm also going to want to... Uh, the band that I saw on Thursday... or I, I, I went to see two bands, but the, the, the one that was um, furthest from uh, the point of last uh, performance um, was on a 20-year anniversary tour. Um, so the vlog is 20 years behind, meaning that um, I'm going to actually do a 20 year anniversary for that record. That's what's, um, so, so this is that, it actually kind of aligns. Um, I've just started this, um, we started this in May. Are we going to do 20 year retrospectives like this? Uh, we very well might, and um, we'll see as things develop. Um, just to give you a heads up, after I write the I'm Mother Earth write-up, the, the next thing in my list is actually going to be a white zombie record. Um, could we get a white zombie reunion? I, I would go see white zombie. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. I don't know how many people white zombie can pull out nowadays. Um, I don't know how many people white zombie could pull out in 1996. I was only 15. I wasn't going to white zombie concerts. In fact, my first concert comes up in September. It's a Smashing Pumpkins concert. Um, but, and it's at, it's, at, it's at a hockey arena, and that's the thing, like, I don't, I would, I would not go see White Zombie on a 20-year anniversary of Super Sexy Swinging Sounds if it's at, you know, the, uh, the Ford Field there, you know, if it's at the, if it's at the football stadium or something, I, I'm not interested in that, right? Um, there's lots of kind of medium-sized venues um, that, that I would be interested in, though, yeah. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't really want to be anywhere where there's more than a few hundred people, <laughs> to be honest with you. Like a thousand, more than a thousand, and I don't really want to be there. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just not my thing. So yeah, the, um, that's what's coming up with that. Um, that's going to be the day. It's going to be filing on the big machine, editing, and, um, whatnot on the laptop, including um, uh, doing an alter reality update at the, at the Blogspot site about the band that I just saw the other day. Um, it, w it would be nice if there's more of that. We'll see as things go on. Um, it's going to depend on the importance of it, right? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not holding my breath on a white zombie reunion. But, um, I 
I'm actually surprised nobody's pointed or nobody suggested to Corgan uh, the idea, or maybe, maybe they have. Um, 20 year melancholy and the infinite sadness reunion show. Hmm. Just play the record all the way through. Well, why not? Would you go to that? I'd go to that. Well, if, it, if it's less than a hundred dollars, and I don't don't think that's a good price either. <laughs> it, that, that itself is an exaggeration, right? Uh, but. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not holding my breath on that either, but I mean, you know, these are the kinds of things that are that, that are coming through, right? So it's 20 years later, and uh, we'll see what comes up as it comes up. Um, but uh, not, I, I wouldn't expect, uh, near the end of the day, if everything is kind of like done, then I might get to some listening, but I don't think that's going to actually happen. I think what will actually probably be more likely to happen is that... Um, I'll get all these loose ends put together by the end of the day, and then I'll be back on to um, doing some listening tomorrow. Um, there is still uh, a possibility I could go to that show tonight. I Right now, I don't really feel like it, <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to feel like it. I'll check out some samples, but it's not likely. I think uh, we're looking at the 23rd, Psychic TV. Um, I'm going to need to go get... Uh, i got two tomatoes left. Um, so I'm going to need to go get um, some groceries. Um, in fact, I uh, should point out that um, I was hungover enough, or throat throat hungover enough, uh, to require some Mountain Dew. Um, that means it was a good night. Um, so that, 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 that was something I did yesterday as well as sitting the rest of the orange juice there. Um, But yeah, that uh, and I made some uh, made some nachos. So um, I, I mentioned I spent more money yesterday or the day before than I wanted to. Uh, that's okay. I think I, I should still be good for this like, TV show. Um, if I go, um, presumably I can get uh, some tomatoes at a decent price. I'm I, I'm I'm at the point where I'm just rambling. But uh, yeah, today's not. Uh, and that'd be too exciting. It's just gonna be bureaucratic type stuff um, as I uh, as I get ready to do uh, to close down. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'll probably be probably be listening to Henry Nine as I'm doing the bureaucratic stuff, right? But it's gonna be kind of kind of casual listening, probably mostly without phones on, just through uh, the laptop speakers. Um, I still haven't finalized the track listing yet, um, although I've got a pretty good idea. Um, it might, uh, I guess near the end of the day I might get it closed, but I doubt it. Um, that's, uh, it's going to be the focus, and then after that, um, I've got, I've got to do, well, if I can get all the bureaucracy for the next bunch of stuff done, then maybe the, you know, the process of closing it'll be quicker, um, as, as I run through it. But that's the, uh, it's not, uh. Not exciting, just, you know, bureaucracy, and then we'll talk about the songs uh, either later tonight or tomorrow, probably. So they the had uh, Kel, or Jell Nordstrom on here, um, the uh, globalization guru, um, or um, I might suggest the... Um, globalization... Uh, that's what I'm looking for here. I can't find the word I'm looking for. Uh, happens far too often. It's kind of a shame. Um, quack? Can we use the word quack? What he's selling may not be well thought of. Um, I'll acknowledge I haven't read his books directly, um, but um, these ideas float around all over the place um, uh, enough that um, you don't really have to have read the text uh, directly to get the idea. Um, and I think that uh, the ideas have been um, demonstrated to be completely wrong. 
Um, Oxana here um, tends to uh, put the devil's advocate, um, whether whether she's uh, you know, saying what she really thinks or not, it's it's, it's never really clear. But um, she certainly um, correct a challenge <clears throat> come on this idea that um, economic integration leads to uh, an, an end of warfare. Um, and uh, she's quite correct to point to the Ukraine um, a as an example. I actually remember watching news reports. Um, again, this video was recorded in late 2014. Uh, I remember watching videos, you know, 2000... I guess it was in late 2013 and early 2014. Um, th that... And these were, you know people that identified as leftist academics uh, making the argument that what's happening in Ukraine can't be happening because it contradicts the theories of globalization um, and that it's all gonna it's all gonna gloss over there cannot be long-term consequences um, and what the argument that Nordstrom makes here um, Nordstrom makes here is um, that free trade is so beneficial that nobody will ever prevent it. That it's irrational to um, uh, fight against free trade. Well, you know, that's such a such a nest of 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 poorly constructed ideas right so a conflict between germany and russia is impossible because free trade that exists you know and, and economic integration is too beneficial and people will not allow it to happen people will, will reject it right they'll fight it the fight, they'll rise up and they'll, you know, they'll kill the generals on their own sides, right? If you try to try to enforce a conflict, what you'll get is a revolution, right? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to challenge the premise. Is there free trade between Germany and Russia? Well. <laughs> There may be economic integration, quote unquote, but it certainly isn't free trade. Um, so all kinds of tariffs, hidden tariffs, taxes, uh, you know, systemic laws designed to, um, you know, place one uh, uh, type of producer over another. Um, the idea that, that there's anything resembling free trade, really anywhere in the world at the moment, is is ridiculous. Um, what there are are they are our corporate signed agreements that put certain groups at a privileged advantage over others. So when you begin with this premise that we have free trade in the first place, and then you just try to draw conclusions from it, um, whether your conclusions are right or not doesn't matter because your premise is false. Right? So let's let's begin with that for the start. Okay. Would I agree that you know a, that, that a free trade agreement between uh, Russia and Germany would or Russia and Europe would eliminate the potential of all possible conflict? Would I agree with that? Um and I mean I'm I, I don't wanna I don't want to construct a straw man, right? I'm maybe being a little bit... Um, I may be exaggerating the point a little bit, right? But would it, would it substantially reduce? Um, I think it probably would substantially reduce it. Maybe not as much um, as people would suggest, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But that's not what we have here, right? What we have instead are agreements that give privileges to s certain interests that are um, 
seen as preferable to the different states. So we have these agreements. These agreements might, uh, you know, put a tariff on this industry, um, whereas there's, you know, supply management on that industry. Um, I mean, you're talking about Europe and Russia. There's supply management all over Europe, and there's supply management all over Russia. You're talking about free trade. It's ridiculous. Right? And so you really have to reduce a lot of his argument to propaganda. And that's really, literally all it is. It is straight up, balls out, flat out, totally fucking propaganda. But a lot of leftists take it seriously. And buy right into it. Right? And the reason is because the projections are so much in line with what they want. Right? So, you know, we want harmony. We want peace. You know, so you give us this idea and then you tell us it'll get us there. We say, eh, alright. But in the process you have to abolish your entire reference frames of thought, right? You have to adopt concepts like class harmony, which are broadly considered impossible um, w within any, any kind of coherent left-wing um, uh, worldview, right? Rather, if you look at what these agreements actually do, which is set up privileged groups and set up hierarchies and set up um, you know, exclusive corridors of power, then conflict is the logical ramification of it. And if you look at the world order, where you have these collusions between powerful corporate interests, powerful banking interests, you know, you, you end up with, you know, whether you want to call them, uh, you know, oligarchs in, in Russia or just aristocrats in, in, in the United States. Um, these these uh, complexes and structures where you have big money and big influence from big money, that system is a system that's designed for conflict. So the idea that the economic economic order that was constructed over the last 50 years was designed for peace is ridiculous on its face. In order to get to that conclusion, you have to misunderstand the agreements and then take that misunderstanding of the agreements and project it out forwards, right? If you look at what the actual agreements actually say, and you analyze them using evidence, and then you can, you know, you know, make those sorts of deductions from from a from a naturally rooted, you know, position. You don't come to those conclusions. You come to the conclusions that this is a this is a that 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 the new world order is not designed to foster peace and order but designed to, con to foster conflict and chaos. And lo and behold, what do we have? We have conflict and chaos. Surprise, right? The world was designed to create conflict, and we have conflict. But there's an even more fundamental point, okay? Even if we agree that we can have free trade, even in an imaginary world that does not exist, where we actually had free trade, um, which means that um, you know you, you have actual free markets, you, you have states don't get in the way, so you don't have supply management, okay, you don't have uh, you know corporate subsidies, you don't have tariffs, um, you don't have any of that kind of stuff, right? It doesn't take away the fact that people um, have economic incentives to um, fund conflict. 
So they talked a little bit about the Clash, about the uh, mobile phone being more powerful than the Kalashnikov. Okay. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. I don't really want to get into the debate. I just want to point out that somebody makes Kalashnikovs and they want to ensure that they're able to sell them. They want, to, they, want, they want there to be a market for their product. And you can have all the economic integration in the world. I mean, it, it, I suppose the economic... I, I, that, that would imply that Russian and German arms companies should work together. It's a trade, you know? Or are they competing over the market? I, I suppose there would be a little bit of that there too, right? No, no, no. Okay, so in, in, in a truly free trade zone, you would have German and Russian arms manufacturers competing for the market. Does that sound like it's it, 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 it's producing peace? Okay, but let's remember again that that's not what we have. Instead, what we have is a system where money buys influence, money buys power, and weapons manufacturers have lots of money. So integration or not, you know, free trade or not, our, our elected political representatives are still in the business of opening up markets for their, their campaign contributors, which are arms manufacturers. I get the theory, okay? The idea is that so much of the conflict in the world that we have today, or let me rephrase that, so much of the conflict in the world that they had in the 19th century um, was um, about you know empires fighting over markets and trade wars, right? So you had the, you know, the different colonial powers fighting over access to, to China. And fighting with China over access to China, right? You know, you had the, the Spanish and the Portuguese fighting over access to gold in South America, right? And if instead of having, you know, these these exclusive zones for for empires, you know, to, to take over and exploit, if you had openly free trade, then you know you, you would you know take away the um, uh, the, the narrative of the nation state controlling uh, you know, resources and markets, right? Okay. But none of that does anything to address the war market itself, right? Or the nationalistic needs. Um, uh, of resource scarcity, right? So you talk about oil scarcity, for example. Uh, we're, we're maybe not there exactly, but we're, we're you know, all projections suggest that we're moving into a uh, into a near future of extreme oil scarcity. H how does free trade, uh, you know, eliminate conflict over scarcity? You've still got the guys with the biggest guns that are going to want control over the resource because it's scarce. And again, who, I mean, how do you, I suppose you could, you could argue that a free market would make it, you know, if countries are at war with each other, then they could trade, you know, weapons across enemy lines. But such, such an arrangement would only fuel the conflict further. Right? So, I think that that's um, one of the biggest um, reasons that we're seeing what we're seeing. Right? In, in, in Ukraine especially.
So I mean, again, it's a it, it's a fantasy to begin with because there isn't free trade. Okay, but if there was, and it would only only address a small amount, you know, of, of the of the things that could potentially lead to conflict. It's not powerful enough to abolish war. And you know, if you want to build a new world order, um, where where conflict is impossible, um, I, I, I I would advise you not to uh, try to create a market system um, to do it with. Um, although, of course, as I mentioned, um, I, I think that it's uh, uh, absolutely apparent and completely obvious that this, this, is, this system was not designed for peace but for war. Um, because there are people that profit from war. So what's the answer then? I think you know the answer. If... If we have people that profit from war, making it difficult to eliminate war, well then we need to eliminate the profit, right? Ah.